Today on Dr. Phil, they've dated for over three years. I want to see a ring on my finger or goodbye. He says he's not ready. I've been burned. I do not want it to happen again. Will he commit or quit? You need to make up your mind. You gonna marry this girl? And a wedding shocker. You found out you married somebody that was still married. With an unbelievable twist. Are you still intimate with him? This is going to be a changing day in your life. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. It matters to you. That's what I want to talk about. Are you ready in the booth? Take Let's do it. Go, Dr. Phil. So he loves me, he loves me not. He loves me, he loves me not. I don't know if he loves me. Wouldn't it be great if there was a formula to get your man to commit? Now after three years of dating, Josie and Curry are on opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to marriage. Will he commit or will she have to quit? Now here's what Josie has to say. Curry and I, we've been dating for over three years. I wanted to be married, but he will not pop the question. He won't commit. I tell Curry either commit, quit, or hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back. I do not want to waste five or ten years. My time clock is ticking. He tells me he can't live without me. He loves me a lot. But wh what's the problem? I don't understand what is the problem. I'm going to leave him. I'm not going to put up with this anymore. I'm done. Well, her boyfriend, Curry, claims that his ex-wife is holding him back. Take a look. What's my problem? Why can't I commit? Josie is the whole package. She's <laughs> marriage material. She's smoking hot. Come on. I'm sure there's 10 guys waiting behind me right now going to jump at the chance. Reason number one, I've been married and divorced before. I've been burned. I do not want it to happen again. Reason number two, I'm taking on the responsibilities of another person's <laughs> livelihood. A little bit scary to me. <laughs> Reason number three, things are great now, but what happens after we get married and what if things change i've seen it happen before in my last marriage and i want that to happen again <laughs> if something doesn't change soon she's gonna dump me well josie and curry come on out let's see what they have to say hey how you doing good Hi, Dr. josie Dad. how are you I'm good. how are you have a seat oh Oh. <laughs> so, sounds to me like you're in a lot of trouble. I'm in big trouble. So, and you are fin you're, you're tired of waiting. Right. How long have you been waiting? Uh, over three years. Over three years? Yeah. Okay. Why, why have you done that? Why have you sat around for three years waiting for him to get it in gear? Uh, I thought I'll give him a break, but that's been a long break. The, <laughs> that is a long break, yeah. right? Yeah. So. What is it about her that just doesn't do it for you? Oh, it, <laughs> look, it's, this audience is going to lambaste me. I just know it. But, uh... Hey, they call them as they <laughs> see them. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's, it's nothing about her that doesn't do it for me. Believe me. Um, I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No, I mean, seriously. If she was the right one for you, y you would think you would do that, right? Yeah, logically yeah. speaking, yeah, I suppose. But you don't. You know she wants to. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think she's a nice person? Oh, absolutely, she's wonderful. Do you think she's a sweetheart? Absolutely. Is, is she kind? Absolutely. Does she do things for you? Yeah. Do, do you love her? Yeah. Do you think she's attractive? Oh, come on. <laughs> She's smoking hot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so basically, if you marry her, you'd be marrying way over your head. I'd be marrying up. Ab <laughs> absolutely. I'd yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, no, yeah. seriously, I know seriously. that. I mean, people say that to me all the time. I mean, they say, clearly, 
<laughs> they think she's a trophy wife, but we're only three years apart. Yeah. I mean, you get this is Ab a good deal. It, absolutely, it, and it is. And, and let, let me let me back up a little bit here if I can. But it, you know, well, when, you've been backing up for three years. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but go ahead. When we met, uh, th things have been great. We have a great time together. She rides on the back of the motorcycle with me. We go hiking. She does all kinds of great stuff together with me. And, and? Uh, and, and it's been great. She's got her place, I got my place. Uh, we, we get together and things are good. But then, you know, the economy hit, I got laid off and times are tough. And uh, a position opened up in Vegas. Um, and so, so you moved to Vegas, and now you have a long-distance so, relationship. So now, and you think that's not going to work? I'm faced with, you know, I, I have a decision I need to make. But the the issues that I dealt with in my previous marriage, it's it's just kind of holding me back. And well, you know, I don't I, know what to do. Well, actually, I'm going to help you with that. But I didn't bring you here today to force this. You don't want to force him into it, no, right? No. If he doesn't want you. He doesn't you, want to then. You accept that, right? right it's not that he right. doesn't want to, it's that he doesn't want you. Right. That's what that's what it boils down to, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I just call him no, the way I see him. That, no, no, here. No, seriously. That's... Seriously. Uh-huh. Here's the deal. You have you have you held back or have you given him your best? I gave him my best. So you've been all that you can be. Right. And you put your heart into it. Right. You've been passionate about it. Right. You've loved, you've committed. Uh, yes, I love him, I care about him. He means everything to me. Okay. And based on results, uh -huh. that hasn't been good enough. Right. And if he's going to keep up with this result, um, I'm going to have to dump him and move on. Yeah. Well, okay. Ouch. Now, see, you don't like the way Ouch. this. You don't like the way this sounds. I understand. I now, we we put a poll up on the website because we put y'all's story up on on our website before you ever got here, and we said, should Curry marry Josie? You can go to Dr. Phil right now and vote, should Curry commit or quit? All right, so I want you to vote online. You can go there right now. We're gonna get back to that in a minute. Now, you said something that I thought was a very valid question, and, and I'm gonna answer it for you. You said, there's no reason why I shouldn't marry her. I just can't decide, and I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Would you like to know why? Yeah, absolutely. I can tell you why. Because here's the, here's the, I'm going to tell you that after the break. But here's what it amounts to. She has given you her absolute best. Mm -hmm. And based on results, you've said it's not good enough. Well, I didn't actually say that to her. I mean, I just. I said based on results, you've said she's not good enough. And that's what you're hearing, right? I mean, that's right, what you get. Because right, right. you put your best out there, and he said, no, not so much. Yeah, Pass. yeah. And right? doesn't have, Dr. Yeah. Phil, it doesn't have anything to do with her. It, well, it really doesn't. I mean... So don't it, take it, it personal. No, no, what I mean is... that is, what you're saying? What? Don't take it personal that he won't marry you. It, re it, really, it really doesn't have anything to do... I mean... I, it, that's it, what I don't understand. Would you like to understand? Yes. Would you like to understand? Yeah. After the break, I'm going to make it exceedingly <laughs> clear. Tomorrow on Dr. Phil, she's spoiled. Instead of playing with marbles, Chelsea would play with diamonds and rubies. She's a moocher. Did you steal from your grandmother? Yeah. Did you get your brother's credit card and run up $11,000? I did. And she's blaming her family. You keep criticizing them because they're rich. They won't let me do the things I want to do in life. So you steal $50,000 in a BMW? That's tomorrow. I was married for 15 years. It was terrible, really bad marriage, just awful. The intimacy definitely went away. We don't want that again. I don't want to experience going through a divorce again. There's absolutely no similarities from my ex-wife to Josie. The polar opposite, we've never lived together. What if we're not compatible? What if she hates the way I brush my teeth or vice versa or something like that, you know? Okay, where, where are you from? I'm from Lebanon. Lebanon? The Middle East, yes. And you've been here how long? Uh, over 20 years. Over 20 years? Yes. And, and you've known Curry for how long? Uh, over three years. <clears throat> so over three years. And 
You're totally committed. You're in love with him. You yes. want to marry him. Yes, I do. And y'all aren't living together because no. you just feel like that's not feel, the right thing to do. Yeah, I feel it's not right to live together. It's just my belief. I know it might work for somebody else, for other people, but it doesn't work for me. I feel he has to be married to me. Right. That's how I feel. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so you moved from Seattle to Vegas for your job. Mm -hmm. And um, do you miss her? Absolutely. You, you miss her every day? Yeah, I miss her every day. Yeah. Would you miss her really bad if she rode off into the sunset with somebody that could make a decision? Yeah. Yeah, that would that would definitely break my heart. I think about I think about it every day and yeah. you know, sometimes I I sit and I think, "Come on, let's just let's just do it. What am I waiting for? What am I waiting for?" And then something clicks in the back of my head and I just go, "Ah, oh, you just that that whole stigma of what happened in the past." And I know that that's, that's wrong. She's not like my ex well, at all. Let me tell you what's clicking in the back of your head, because you may not be aware of this. But see, we don't react to what happens in the world. We don't react to what we see. We don't react to who we're with. We react to what we say to ourselves about what we see. Okay, so, you know, you see a picture. You don't react to the picture. You say, I like it or I don't like it. And based on what you say, that's how you react. And you've been married before. And it didn't work out right. Mm -hmm. And so you have what I call tapes. It's like elevator music that runs in your head mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah, yeah. You have tapes about women. Now, they were actually beliefs just about your ex, but you've actually generalized them to other women. Would you agree? I suppose you're right. Yeah. Well, let's just think about it. All right, I, I brought this out because I'm going to write it down for you because since it's taken you three years to figure this out, I thought that you might need to see this in black and white. I appreciate that. That's, okay, that's, yeah. now I wrote down, you said your ex-wife lied to you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so if you've generalized that, then you have a tape that says women lie. That's one of your concerns, right? Mm -hmm. She manipulated you, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have a tape in your head that says women manipulate, right? Mm -hmm. You said that she threatened you all the time. Mm -hmm. So you say women threaten, okay? Mm -hmm. You said she criticized you. Mm -hmm. So you say women are critical, yeah. okay? You said she attacked you verbally, emotionally, right? That she was abusive. Mm -hmm. So you say women are abusive and attack. Okay, you said <laughs> that you were afraid. So you apparently think women are scary. <laughs> okay, now I could go on and on and on. And one of the things you said that really stuck out to me, when all of this was going on, you said you were helpless to change it. So. Here's this guy walking around in the world just saying women lie, women are manipulative, women are threatening, women are critical, women are abusive. And then here comes you. Yes. And so he looks at you with all of this elevator music playing in his head. Not a pretty music. Not a pretty music. <laughs> Not a period of music. It's all about nope. you. I mean, you didn't do any of this, did you? No, no, none. Did she lie to you? No, Manipulate not. you? Never. Threaten you? Criticize you? Attack you? Abuse you? Scare you? No. Make you feel helpless or trapped? She did scare me when I met her, because, I mean, look at her. <laughs> yeah, that ain't what you ought to be scared about. You ought to be scared about that several million people are seeing her on national television right now and getting to know that she is available. Uh, oh, man. Oh, you're kidding me. And you know the thing that, that gets me the most out of all of this? Mm -hmm. You're happy to be out of your marriage, right? You're happy that yeah, your ex is gone? Yeah, absolutely. She is controlling you and dominating you this very second. She owns you. Yes. She owns you. I never yes. thought of that. I never thought of it that way. Yes. She is coming between you and her right now. 
That's true. Never thought of it that way, but you're right. She owns you. You said she manipulated you before. She's manipulating you right now. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I <laughs> had all this stuff planned that I was going to say to you when I came out here, and now I'm speechless. <laughs> because he's right. What am I going to say to that? Well, I don't right. know, dummy. Oh. <laughs> See, this is what I was afraid of. <laughs> I mean, seriously. She owns you. She, you're like a marionette, and she, she gets you over there close to her, and she jerks you back. Oh, boy. I never thought of it that way before. How am I doing? You are absolutely right. 100%, I agree with you. More than 110%. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I just hope you absorb it. I'm taking it in, baby. We'll be right back. Let's check on our poll online. 46% of online voters think Curry should commit, and 54% think they should call it quits. Wow. You know why? Why is that? They're thinking if, if you got to talk him into it, don't bother. Hmm. Don't bother. Yeah. And you know, I've, I, I, I've said it before, marriage is hard enough Right. if two people are kicking, fighting, and scratching to get to each other. Right. I mean, if he's willing to climb the mountain, swim the stream, slay the dragon, <laughs> and fight his way to your door, and if you got to track him down like a cheetah on a gazelle, <laughs> um, then I, I guarantee you women are thinking, if he wants you, he better come get you. Right, right. Is well, what they're saying. Am right. I right? Right. I mean, that's what women are yeah, thinking. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? I, I get that. And I, I figured the majority of people w would think that. Uh, but the thing is, is things were, things were great when we were together up in Seattle. And really, honestly, the only thing that tore us apart was the fact that I needed a job. And, and kind of secretly, I was hoping she'd come with me to Vegas. And um, that hasn't happened yet. It's been a month and a half. I just moved there. And it's not going to happen. I'm not going to move <laughs> to Vegas. I'm not. I'm I am not. Here's the thing. You, you just said, so let me, I'm just trying to help you yeah. here, guy to no, guy. I, I, you know, yeah. forget about these I'm, guys. I'm with you. you. Okay. You said in Seattle everything was great mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. It wasn't great for her. Am I right? Right. You're right. Because she's sitting there thinking, why am I not enough for him? Yeah. Why am I not good enough? But, why? but she is. No, no, she, no. She I'm telling is. you what she's thinking. Yeah. I'm telling you what she's thinking. This is what you're thinking. And she's thinking, I, you know, I didn't do anything to him. I didn't lie to him. I didn't manipulate him. I didn't criticize him. I didn't hurt him. I didn't trap him. All I did was love him. Mm -hmm. Right. And whatever I have to offer, it apparently isn't good enough. And that makes me frustrated. Well, it yeah. makes me mad. It makes me angry sometimes. It's like, why? What did I do to deserve this? I don't deserve this. Yeah. You know? And I don't want to put up with this anymore. I get to a point right now, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. There is plenty of other guys around. Thank you. Honestly, baby, you, you need to know that it's, 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 not, it's not you. It doesn't have anything to do with you. Hey, all these guys are <laughs> chiming in. I can hear them right now. But, but seriously, between you and I, it, it's, it's not it, you are enough for me, mm -hmm. honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, I'm, and I'm taking all this in, honestly. I, the past couple days that we've spent together talking about all this stuff really honestly makes me realize all the things that, that I do love about you. I know. But I want to see a ring on my finger soon or goodbye. I am done. I'm done. I'm just telling you how I feel. Three and a half years, it's, it's enough. It's and enough. you're not getting any younger. I'm not. <laughs> feel it biological clock ticking? Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's what she's thinking. Yes. 
That's, that's what she's thinking. I'm not saying you're getting old, but that's I'm telling I'm him what you're thinking. That. I am <laughs> thinking that. He, he's right. He's absolutely right. I am thinking that. And I don't want to deal with that anymore. And I don't want to be laying in bed at night thinking about it or thinking when I'm going to see you again. I can't fly and see you to Vegas back and forth. I have a job. And it wastes a lot of money. I can't do that anymore. I can't. You need to make up your mind soon or done. I'm done. So, you're going to let her inspire you or you're going to let her control you? I, I think I'm, I'm going to take the first part. Yeah. You're going to marry this girl? You're trying to get me to do this no, on, on national TV no, here. No, I'm not. I, I'm not. I'm not. These ro forget the rose petals. That's not. There's nothing really. <laughs> I'm not. I, I'm just saying. That's that's her question. She's she's saying put up or shut up. Now, you yes. don't have to do it right now. Okay. You have to do it right now. I'm not trying to trap you into something here at all. Okay. But I want you to know that she feels like she has put up enough, and it's time for you to match it or walk. Yes. Yeah. Yes, true? it's true. Or hit the red, hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more. <laughs> Stuff. Uh, yeah, I I had to get to this point. All right, you need to give this some thought. Now I'm going to talk okay. to you before the end of the show. Okay. All right, next we're going to meet a woman who thought she was having a dream wedding, that she was marrying the love of her life, and she discovered it was all just a big lie. John gave me a fairy tale wedding. It was beautiful. All our friends, our family, it was just perfect. But our marriage was not real. I just can't trust him. The ring, the dress, and madly in love with the man of her dreams. Melissa thought she had the ultimate commitment until she discovered that the entire wedding was fake. Everything about our marriage and relationship had been a lie from day one. I met John about two years ago. He swept me off my feet, and we were just all gung-ho about getting married. I went dress shopping. It just went hog wild. John initially told me that he was married twice. Right before the wedding, I found out that he had a third wife, and he's been divorced for about two years. At that point, it was too late emotionally to go back. All I wanted to do was go forward because I was so in love with this guy. John gave me a fairy tale wedding. It was beautiful. The fish pond, the DJ was awesome. The head table was gorgeous. All our friends, our family, it was just perfect. I never saw our marriage certificate. I just had a gut feeling. I asked him for months, can I see it? Can I see it? He's like, no, my sister has it. Finally, I just drove myself into the courthouse. I said, well, can you tell me if I'm married? So they looked up John's name and Saw the first marriage, saw the second marriage, saw the third marriage. First two were divorced, the third one still married. I was betrayed by him because our marriage was not real. I waited a long time to fall in love with someone, but it's not real love. He lies all the time. My heart's still connected to him, but the trust part is what separates me giving him my heart. He says he loves me, but if you love someone, you don't do the things that, that he's done. I just can't trust him. Okay, so in August of 09, you have this beautiful wedding, but you, you never saw the marriage certificate. No. He's like, don't worry about it. I'll, I have a friend, you know, who can get our, our paperwork, we'll be fine. And, um, you know, we'll sign it and send it in. I didn't really know legalities of things, so I'm like, cool. You know, I'll do my thing down here. We'll get the paperwork. We'll sign it at the wedding, and we'll have it. We'll be good. And his sister married you. Yeah. Okay, so you would ask him about this, and he would just get mad when you were leading up to it because it... First, you, you thought he had been married once, then twice, then three times? Yeah. This unfolded across time. He didn't tell you about three times to begin with? Not until the third one he didn't tell me about until after he snagged me. After he got my heart and I started really liking him and I'm like, you know what, good people mess up. He's never met someone like me. I'm special, I'm different. 
and mm -hmm. you know maybe this is the time to give him a new start. You found pictures of him with a woman. Yeah. A, a compromising pictures, and and you yeah. said, he said it was just somebody he dated. Mm hmm because I turned, don't remember her name. I don't know who she is. Doesn't remember her name. Found a wedding band, a trinket box with I love <clears> you, <throat> the whole nine yards. I was like... But this know. woman he couldn't remember the name of turned out to be his third wife? Yeah. Of 14 years? Well, they were together. I think I said that wrong, but it was a total of 14 years they were together, but they were married for almost 10. But he couldn't remember her name? Nope. And I know her name. Yeah, so, <laughs> so when you found out that you married somebody that was still married, he wasn't subject to criminal charges because it wasn't a real wedding. Mm -mm. I don't know what he told his sister, but she went online and supposedly she took a test to be able to marry someone. Mm -hmm. But later on down the road, we had dinner and she says, you know, I, I, I knew about you know, things with John and, and the other one, you know, his third wife, and um, I was gonna tell you if he didn't tell you soon, but I don't know at what point she and knew. He told you that he graduated from the University of Alabama? <laughs> yeah. Did he? No. he? no. No, he never went to college. He said he blew his knee out and he lost his scholarship through the rest of Alabama, and he never even went to college. Well, because we talked to the university of Alabama and they gave us a statement, the school was unable to locate either a degree or an enrollment record for the subject of your verification request. So he didn't go there. Has he told you now that he didn't go there? Well, because I unraveled it. Well, you're going to hear what John has to say next. We'll be right back. Monday on an all new Dr. Phil. It's Avery's first birthday. Repeat after me. You can't change what you don't acknowledge. <laughs> Which grandparent? This is good for you. That's my screen. Is the better babysitter. All right, good match. Plus, she's lost over 100 pounds. Think she looks good? <laughs> but hasn't gained enough compliments from her husband. Do not pause yeah. when I ask you this stuff. <laughs> I am lobbing you softball today. <laughs> That's Monday. This is our wedding band that we had picked out together. I went to an appraiser to see how much the ring was worth, and I find out that it's cubic zirconia. It's not even real. He said he paid $900 for it. He said the gold was real and the diamonds on the side were real. I said all you had to do was tell me you couldn't afford it. As long as it was a real ring, I didn't care what size it was, as long as it came from your heart, because it meant something. It was just another lie. Well, the ring wasn't the only fake thing about her wedding. It turns out that Melissa's entire marriage was a sham because he was still married to somebody else. Now, we interviewed John over the phone, uh, and he agreed to be on the show, but then he changed his mind. Several times. Uh, several Back times. Back and forth. In fact, you changed your mind several because times. Because of him manipulating me, that he, it would ruin my life and my <laughs> daughter's life. I said, I have nothing to lose. You do. <laughs> Well, he admits to lying about his divorce, and he also said that I basically lied to Melissa about how many times I was married, the fact that I was still married, and how long I was married. I lied about everything. I kept lying because I was afraid to lose her. If I told her the truth, she wouldn't have stayed with me. I even lied to my sister and told her I had the marriage license when I didn't. I don't even think my sister knew that I wasn't divorced yet. It's not in my personality to lie, but once I lied, I had really? to keep lying to cover it up. <laughs> That's what he He's said. He's only done it for two years. So you don't have anything to do with him now? The only reason I have anything to do with him right now is because financially I can't do it. And that's the only reason. And I have a 13-year-old daughter, and I feel like I'm going to fail her. Um... It's the main reason why I talk to him. Because he calls me every day. He doesn't even give me a chance to call him. He doesn't give me a chance to heal. He just is just calling all the time. I miss you. I love you. I'm like, John, you're not giving me a chance. I can't even tell if I miss you or even ever love you again. I don't know. I got a bell going off in my head here. Um, are you still intimate with him? We have been, yes. Even after everything you, you found out. And the main reason for that is because he 
neglected me <coughs> for a long time, and it, it almost felt good to be wanted or hugged or or caressed, even if there was no emotion involved with him. And I might as well do it with him and not someone else. I'm not like that. I hear you. <laughs> My friends think the same thing. Well, Melissa's best friend and bridesmaid, Roxanne, is here. She says that they shouldn't stay together. So what, what do you think about this? As this started happening and unraveling, I thought, wow, this guy really loves her. Um, and as things kept unfolding and I kept learning more about what John has put Melissa through and how much he contacts her constantly, he manipulates her, I, I've, he's controlling her. I, I think now that she's gone, he's going into this mode, that a panic mode, he doesn't have her to control anymore. So she definitely needs to, to get the distance and, and move on. Have you talked to him since you've been here? How did, how did that come to pass? Um, I'm, I'm a big person on, on telling the truth. And I didn't tell him what I was, I ended up making the decision to come. And um, last night I called him, because I was on the plane already, so he couldn't stop me this time. Because it took forever to even get here, trust me. I, we went back and forth and he kept stopping me. And I finally got on the plane. And I'm like, I have to tell you something. So I told him. And he just went. Irate. I just can't believe you lied to me. <laughs> I'm like, I've been real with you. I've given you my heart. I've given you everything I have in my heart and love you so much. And you're going to get on me about lying one time. And I just told you the truth the next day because I can't hold it back anymore. Well, isn't that kind of the pot calling the kettle black? <laughs> I mean, did, yeah. did you say that to him? You, I told him, I say, you're just, like, ridiculous. Well, if he wanted this situation to work, then wouldn't you think that he would have been the first one through the door here and sat down and said, Dr. Phil, I have messed up. I, I want to make this right. Tell me what I need to do. Wouldn't you think he would have leaned into this instead of run away from it? We found out our cat had... Um, diabetes, severe diabetes, and then he, it just fell right into his lap. We can't go. Because <laughs> your cat was sick. Yeah. And I'm like, John, you know what? I didn't even, I just... Is, is he a veterinarian? No. <laughs> Our staff has talked to him, I don't know, dozens of times, times. 40, 50 times. And I'm told that they, he came up with this cat story. They offered to board the cat mm -hmm. for him. They offered to get a veterinarian to to oversee everything and take care of the cat in your absence. They, they, they took away every obstacle. And it just seemed like he just thought, you know, I'm not going to come here because Dr. Phil's going to ask me questions I don't have. He didn't want to get thrown under the bus, he said. <clears throat> he didn't want to be humiliated. He didn't want to lose his business. He coaches softball. He didn't want to jeopardize that. I'm like, if you really love me, you would do whatever it took. Well, but you are here. And I hope you're glad you're here because I love you. you're you're, well, <laughs> you're so smart. Like you see things, and you just by the first set of people, I'm just like, oh, like I didn't think it that way. Yeah. You just have a way of like reaching in and pulling out without even trying. <laughs> well, obviously, an intelligent woman. <laughs> but, um, I would very much like to get you some help there at home. Someone that you can sit down without him, not marriage counseling, not couples counseling, but just you and, and if your daughter, if you want at some point, to sit down and get your focus, get your bearings back on your self-esteem, your self-worth, and recognize that this isn't about you. He brought this toxicity to you, and you need to rise above that and decide what you're going to do with your life. And I want to get you some help to do that. This is a very important first step. And I, I hope women that are out there that are seeing warning signs and don't want to see them because they don't want them to be true, take a lesson from what you're saying. You're using your life here, and I think that's a great thing. If you had this to do over again, you wouldn't deny those warning signs. No. I'm proud that you came. I'm proud that you're using your life and telling this story. And I'm proud that you're standing up on your own. And thank you for coming here. Thank you. Okay? So we're going to get you some help with this. Because I think you need it. Thank you very much.
Okay, all right, fair enough. All right, I'm gonna to talk to another couple here in a minute that says the happiest day of their life turned into the worst experience of their life when the wedding planner scammed them out of $30,000. We'll be right back. A woman who served time for pretending to have cancer and scamming people for money to pay medical bills now faces charges for a new scam that targeted engaged couples. Tanya Clark was arrested Friday night, accused of taking nearly $30,000 from another couple, promising them a grand wedding at the Canyons Resort. This is just a nightmare yes. scenario. So you guys get engaged and you think, we need a wedding planner. Yes. You had forked over $30,000. Yes. It was devastating. This is just unbelievable. So this woman had been in jail for another scam before this. So she's just a con artist. How yeah. did you? How did she find you, or you find her? Well, I went on to a wedding website and requested some information, and she contacted me through that and said she only works on references and, and referrals, and she provided me with what, four to six references, and I contacted them, and um, we met with her, and she was nice. We let her into our home. I cooked for her. We were friends. And she paid for a lot of the things that she lined up with a stolen credit card? Yes. So that meant those things weren't really paid for? Nothing was paid for. Nothing. So you had to pay for all of that? Again, yes. And then you had to pay extra for what wasn't done? Yes. Think of all the couples that are watching this right now. They're thinking, oh my gosh, references seem legitimate, got burned for 30, ultimately 50,000 bucks. What's the lesson here? What would you do differently? Oh, <laughs> everything. Uh, run to Vegas? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he would. He tried to get me to run, but I'm like, no, I want a wedding. I mean, <laughs> I waited so long to meet the man of my dreams, and she took the one experience that all women are supposed to have and smashed it, smashed it to pieces. So what I would do differently is not hire her. Yeah. I would not hire her. Um, I would run away as well. I wouldn't do this again. This has got to be putting stress on you guys. Yeah, Are you? Has it affected the way you two get along? It's not easy. I mean, the money situation's really tough because we didn't plan on starting our life together, being broke and in debt. So that's a little tough. It's one thing to lose the day. It's another thing to lose the money. But if you lose the relationship because the stress gets you and you just start barking at each other just out of frustration, that would be the real tragic loss here. And it's what's called non-directional venting. You know, it's like you're really mad at her. You're really mad at, at things that have nothing to do with the two of you, but because you're handy, you just kind of can take it out on each other. And you gotta really guard against doing that. You gotta really say, look, we don't have enough money here. I mean, clearly, all of a sudden, we're $50,000 in debt, and our hearts are hurting, we're upset about this, but we just can't take it out on each other. And you gotta recognize when that's happening and just say, hey, wait a minute, this is exactly what Dr. Phil talked about. This is exactly what he said, I'm just, I, I haven't got closure on this yet. It's still an open wound, and I'm so upset, and I'm taking it out on you, and I'm sorry. Let's just, let's not do that. Let's just stop this. Let's go walk around the block. Let's go do something different. I mean, you got to label it so you don't do it, because this, too, will pass, and you will have a great story to tell your grandkids. I mean, seriously. <laughs> you got to meet you. <laughs> just, think when you're, just think when your daughters get married or your sons get married, you can say, okay, sit down, because we're going to talk about this. You're going to Vegas. No. Yeah. <laughs> and we're coming. I mean, you, you've, got a, you've got a story to tell, but you don't want to lose the relationship in this, right? Okay, now not only did Nate and Tina pay 30000 to the planner, they had to pay the vendors 20 grand. Uh, obviously, they opted for no honeymoon because they were broke at that point. So I decided that they could use one, and so did the folks at Rancho Valencia Resort and Spa in Rancho Santa Fe, California. So we're going to fly you guys there so you can have that honeymoon that you've been wanting. And it is a spectacular. Look at this place. It is unbelievable.
three days and two nights in the Garden Oasis, spa treatments, breakfast, dinner, everything. We want you to look back on your honeymoon with good thoughts. So at least we can put a little bit of silver lining around this. This is a terrific, terrific place, okay? Thank you. All right, fair enough. We'll be right back. Well, so, Curry, have you been thinking about this? We, have we scared you away with these wedding <laughs> nightmares here? No, I, no, really not. I feel really bad for these folks, man. That's just a terrible deal. Uh, I commented, I said, man, I'm glad we're not the ones in that position. Yeah. But, um, yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, your turn. <laughs> no, you, you, you keep looking at me like I'm wanting you to propose to her or something, and actually I'm not. I, what I want you to do is I really want you to go home. I want you to be very, very thoughtful about this. I want you to think about what I said. Take your power back from this woman you were married to and, and do what's right for you and, and what's right for her. And you're at a point that you either need to marry her or you need to respect her enough to tell her. Yeah. And, yeah and let her go. So I, th I hope you guys yeah. will be very thoughtful about this. I appreciate that. Take your power back. Don't make her pay for the sins of yeah. one that's gone before yeah. her. Because it's not her fault. Because she it's didn't do it. At all. She didn't do that stuff. All she's doing is, is sitting there loving you. Yeah. And, uh, and so you, you need to be thoughtful about this. And then you need to let us know exactly what y'all are going to do. Yes. All right. Yes, thank you. Now, if you want to know what to do to be safe in planning your wedding or a party, you can go to drphil.com. We're going to have some very important guidelines for you there. And if you are in a commitment crisis, you can go to drphil.com. You can click on Be On The Show. You can tell us your story. We deal with all kinds of issues here. So go there, write us a letter, and you could be right here on stage, uh, hopefully working things out. I want to thank all of my guests for being here today. Thanks, guys. So long. Dr. Phil. You consider it cheating if he's sleeping with his wife. I know, it sounds ridiculous. That's because it is. Affairs can ruin lives. You dummied up divorce papers and gave them to her. But the real victims. You're planning to have a baby with another woman's husband. Are the children of affairs. I was 11 when my mom told me my dad was not my father. My entire life was a lie. Let's do it. If we're going to do something here that matters, then we got to deal with the truth. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. If I can help get this family back on track, are you willing to do that? Ready, free, take. This is going to be a changing day in your life. The cries of a beautiful baby being born into this world should be one of the most joyous times in a parent's life. But that's not always the case, especially when the baby is a product of lies and deception. Now, we've all seen the media firestorm surrounding the shocking affairs of Arnold Schwarzenegger and politician John Edwards, who both had children with their mistresses. Now, surprisingly, 120,000 children born each year are the product of an extramarital affair. 120,000. So who is at fault and who's to blame? Are these married spouses seduced into stepping outside their marriage? Or is the other person manipulated into falling in love with a married man or woman? And by the end of the show, you're going to know exactly where I stand on that. But first, I want you to meet Jermaine, who is five months pregnant with a married man's baby. I've been dating a married man for almost two years. I'm five months pregnant, and I'm worried that he's cheating on me with his wife. I lied to my wife. I lied to the woman I was having the affair with. I didn't care what anybody else thought. It didn't matter. I just did what I wanted. I went to his house, asked his wife what was going on, and she said, 
We're happily married. He said you were a big mistake, and we're trying to rebuild our relationship. All I could do was cry and apologize. Later, Trevor asked me to give him a second chance. He proposed to me. We started living together. I feel like he's still not being honest, and it, oh, it just infuriates me. Jermaine is a drama queen. Jermaine does not let anything ever go, and she minimizes what she's done and maximizes what I've done, and it just never freaking ends. Trevor lies. When he says he's at work, he's really not at work. This horse has been beat so many times that it is flat as a pancake. Jermaine takes the smallest of issues and then turns them into a circus. She wants to be the bitch, and she is. I found this big, beautiful bouquet of flowers on my doorstep. So I'm thinking these flowers are for me. Open the card, and the card has his wife's name, and it says, things will get better, Trevor. I did not send anything to my wife. Trevor's wife left a note with it that said we've never been apart, we're still together. Stuff happens, it's done, get over it, and move on. What, what do you mean by that? And, and let me get this right, by the way, you're married still. Yeah. And how long? Uh, we'll have the divorce finished at the end of the month. How long have you been married? Uh, 10 years. 10 years. And how long have you two been an item? Almost two. Two years? I assume you don't want to be here at all. <laughs> I'm the jerk, so yeah, probably no, not. No, that's a question. I'm assuming you don't want to be here at all. Would that be correct? That would be correct. You're here under duress, I assume, from her. That is correct. Because you said she's just a bitch, won't turn things loose. And so I assume she says, you're either going to go out there, we're going to work this out, or something. No, she said, I'd really appreciate it if you'd back me up and for the first time in a relationship show that you care and make me first. First time in a relationship show that you care. So you're here because she wanted you to be. Yes, sir. Not because you want to be. Because no, you sir. think I'm going to throw you under the bus. Yes, sir. Because you're a lion, slime. Yes, sir. Misleading. Yes, sir. Scumbag. Yes, sir. That's your theory. Yes, sir. That you think would be my attitude about it. Yes, sir. Well, we'll see. Okay. <laughs> you want to be here because why? I want to know the truth. And uh, what, what do you want to know the truth? About what? Am I the only one? Am I the only one? No, he's married. That I understand. <laughs> However, I need to know that if we're going to move on in the future, that his behavior from the past is going to stop, that this isn't going to continue and be OK. OK, so you want my opinion on these things? Absolutely. So, so ask me the questions you want me to answer, and I'll just answer them. We'll just get right to it. And see, while I'm talking to her, I'm not dogging on your ass, so this is good. <laughs> All right, go ahead. What do you want to know? How much longer do I need to stick around and say things are going to change? How much longer should you do this? I don't know. How long does it take you to get to the airport? That's, what, that's how much longer you should be in this relationship. If you're asking me if I think he will change, the answer is not even almost. Not even almost. He's lying to you now. He's lying to you today. He lied to you yesterday. He lied to you in the beginning. And, and then understand. you bought into it, and, and, and you guys have created this ridiculous relationship founded in deception, and now you want to have some integrity to it? What is this what they call honor among thieves? It, that, that old saying finally makes sense to me. Honor among thieves. So, is he a liar? Yes. Is he deceptive? Yes. Is he untrustworthy? Yes. Is he likely to cheat on you? For sure. But so are you. Right. You're a liar. You're deceptive. You're and vindictive. You've gone to his wife, have you not? Yes. And so you thought, it's not enough that I'm going to cheat with her husband and, and have a baby with him. I think I'll go over there and rub it in her face. No, absolutely not. When I went over there... Oh, you meant this in a good way. No. Hi. <laughs> I'm <laughs> your husband. You, you told her that because you wanted to brighten her day? No. I went to her because I wasn't getting the truth from him. 
And when I went over there, I, that was the only thing I needed to know. Are you together with him? What kind of relationship are you having? I never well, told Well, I need to add something anything. to the list then. In addition to being a liar and, and deceptive, you are selfish. You said, I needed answers. So I'll go over there to his wife and inject myself into her world and day to get some reassurance. You wanted to know if he was sleeping with her. And you say you consider it cheating if he's sleeping with his wife. I know, it sounds ridiculous. That's because it is. It is. You want to know if he's sleeping with his wife. Did you ask her? I didn't ask her if she was sleeping with him. What did you ask her? Are you guys together working on your marriage? Mm -hmm. and did she you tell her who you were? She knew who I was. Yeah. And what gave you the right to knock on that woman's door and use her to create your own reassurance. What the hell gives you the right to do that? Nothing. But you did. Do you have any sense of remorse whatsoever I what do. you've done to this woman? I do. But when this started, Dr. <clears throat> Phil, he told me, I'm getting a divorce. We are separated. We're done. We live in separate rooms in the house. <clears throat> this wasn't me going out looking for something that I couldn't have. Yes, it was. But you, and listen, you're, you're both victim and perpetrator here. I mean, there's no question about it. And when I say you're a liar, it's not just that in the heat of the moment you tell people what they want to hear. I'm talking about you do premeditated fraud, correct? Is it not true that you went on the internet and downloaded divorce papers and dummied them up and gave them to her? I actually went to the courthouse, but yeah. You went to the courthouse and got them? Yeah. And, and gave them to her to trick her into thinking what was going on? Yeah, buy more time, yeah. Buy more time. So you go to the courthouse, you get fake divorce papers, and he comes and gives no, them to you. they're real. That, that's, yeah. what, they weren't real. They're real paper. They yeah. did come from trees. You're right. <laughs> no, I mean, they came from the courthouse, yeah. And then you sign for them, and they say, OK, and they record it in the county, and then I <clears> put down what I want and gave it to her, yeah. Yeah. There's a legal term called fraud in the inducement. I'm not a lawyer, but I'm also not an idiot. You induced her fraudulently. Yes, sir. And now she's having your baby. Yes. OK. The layers here just keep going on. We'll take a break. I'll be right back. And you got pregnant on purpose, by the way, right? We planned it, yes. Tell me what went through your head with another woman's husband. Trevor has recently locked his phone, so I can't see who is texting him or who's calling him. That's suspicious. And when I ask to see his phone, he's pushing buttons before I can actually see. Well, Jermaine says she recently figured out how to unlock Trevor's phone and was shocked. <laughs> really? <laughs> shocked by what she saw. What would you see that, that shocked you? A text from someone other than his wife that... Another girl? Another girl. What did he say? Um, she was texting him about her inevitable breakup with someone that was a friend of his, and she missed her walk and talk buddy. She could really use one now. It'd be you. Yep. The walk and talk buddy. Mm-hmm. And you were shocked. Why would that surprise you that you have company? If he... My focus was that the other woman was the wife, not this random woman. You know, I've said this so many times. If they'll do it with you, they'll do it to you. If he will cheat with you, he will cheat on you. I'm curious what you at home think, right? So right now on DrPhil.com, we have a poll asking the following question. Do you think a man who cheats once will cheat again? Well, the response was a pretty adamant 
response. 76% said yes, and that leaves 24% that haven't got any sense. Okay. <laughs> you know this is true. You're going to cheat on her. Uh, you no. know that about yourself, right? I'm not going to do it. You're I, not did gonna it. Do I cheated the one time. The other girl was just a friend. That's what it was. I had the affair. I mean, how much <clears throat> lower in life can you put yourself? I mean, I have feel you, like I'm about this <clears throat> tall today. Have you, have you cheated on her already? No. no. Before, you, before yeah, you say anything. I was married, so yes, <clears throat> I did cheat on her. Okay, but other than with your own wife, have you had other girls? No, I have not. My wife, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you believe that? No, I don't, and he knows that. I, I believe he's, I believe he's still cheating, even all the way up to last week. Yeah. Trevor has an interesting analogy when it comes to his marriage philosophy. You probably want to hear this because you'll know what you're buying into. I kind of associated marriage with like buying a boat. The first day you buy it, it's the greatest thing out there. You put a ton of money into it, then when you get rid of the boat, that's the second best day of your life. That's how I felt about my first marriage, yeah. So it's a great day when you get married, and it's a great day when you get out. I, yeah, married the first time, married the wrong person. Do you think he's a high-risk candidate? I do. And you got pregnant on purpose, by the way, right? We planned it, yes. Yeah, you, you mapped this out and planned it. Yes. Tell me what went through your head. When you're planning to have a baby, with another woman's husband. And you're, what did you say to yourself? He's done with her. He's leaving her. He's done. And we have a future together. And that's the future I wanted, was with Trevor. Would you have felt different or better if Trevor had come to you and said, listen, I, I really have feelings for you, but I'm in a marriage. And I don't feel that it's proper or appropriate, ethical or moral, to launch into this relationship while I'm in this one. So I'm going to do what I need to do to conclude this marriage. And when I've done that and can walk freely uh, in the sunshine, then I'm going to hope that you're still in, in my space and I'm going to come to you and find you. But I owe it to her to finish this before I start this, and I owe it to you to finish this before I start this. How would you have felt? That it would have been more credible on both parts. As opposed to getting phony divorce papers. Right. But I'm just as responsible because... Oh, of course. You know, I... How did this start, by the way? She found me on Facebook and then friended me. We, we went, went to the same high school, so they always pop up, your friend knows this friend kind of thing. And I saw his picture and <clears throat> friended him. Did you remember him? I did. From He was a freshman, I was a senior. He was a hottie in school, and he was sweet, and you know, I was like, wow. So you were a hottie in school. <laughs> This isn't going any better for me, is it? <laughs> oh, I'm just asking. So then you ask her if she w wanted to be friends with benefits. Oh, God, that was like six months later. We were having lunch one right. day, yeah. And we were joking around, yeah. OK. I don't think there was anything serious that day. We were joking around, joke here, joke there. And then she left and went her way. And Yeah, well, this baby's a real knee slapper. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got a child coming now. I do. OK, well, we're going to talk some more about this, but I, I want you guys to pay attention to a story that I want to introduce here uh, that has a lot to do with this child that you have right now. And then we're going to talk some more, but I want you to hear that story first. So after the break, I'm going to introduce you to somebody that was the product of an affair. We'll be right back.
I was 11 years old when my mom sat me down and told me that the man that I grew up with as my dad was not my father. I was the product of an affair. My entire life was a lie. Well, Krista was only 11 years old when she says her whole world came crumbling down. I was 11 years old when my mom sat me down and told me that the man that I grew up with as my dad was not my father and that she had had an affair. At that moment, my world was turned upside down. My entire life was a lie. Finding out that I was the product of an affair completely took my self-esteem and squashed it. I felt like my family looked at me different. When I think about my mom and what she did, I feel a lot of anger. I feel like she was selfish. She didn't think about the way this was going to affect my life. I was 16 when I lost my virginity. I was looking for love, so it was one boy to another boy to another boy. By 17, I went down to 80 pounds. The only thing I could control in my life was my eating. I ran away from home when I was 18 and got pregnant with my son. I have a lot of shame from what they did. When I look in the mirror, I see someone who's not worthy to be here, who's not worthy to be loved. I feel like I have my own scarlet letter I walk around with. I just want to have the burden of being the product of an affair lifted off my shoulders so that I can move on in my life. So you said a burden. Yeah. You want it lifted off your shoulders. Tell me about the burden. I feel that I didn't deserve to be born. I tore an entire family apart. My mom was married. She had two children. My biological father was married as well. And um, they had an ongoing affair. I was their second child, their first one, they miscarried. I was planned because um, they were in love. And no one ever thought of how it was going to affect me. But she chose to stay married to her husband and have me. And he pretended he was my father. And so you say what to yourself about that? I say that my daddy died at the age of 51 because I was born, because he died of a broken heart because my mother left him when I was 11 years old. And if she was there, she would have taken care of him. And maybe he'd still be here. She wasn't there because she had an affair with a married man, and she was married. Not only did, was he having an affair with her, but he was having affairs with other women. And when I was four or five years old, he left with another younger woman and left it out of my mom's life. So you describe yourself as a bastard child. Yes. And carry the burden of, I've just heard you click it off, tearing apart two families. Yes. Uh, being responsible for your father's death. Yes. Um, you became anorexic, 5'5", five, five, 85 pounds, promiscuous at 16. I just wanted to be loved. <clears throat> Looking for love. Yes. I, I, so what, what do you, what do you think when you love. hear this story? I, I just feel like that baby's already got so many strikes against it and that when the baby gets here, you can't love it enough. You have to love it 10 times more than you love any other baby because that child is going to always feel, it's going to know that it tore up a family. I don't know if he has other children. <laughs> and one day my brother turned around and said, this is my half-sister, and it broke my heart because I was always his sister, and now all of a sudden I'm his half-sister? His dad was my dad. He was my daddy, and he was a wonderful man, an absolutely wonderful man. And my father, he was not such a wonderful man, and he wasn't there until I was 11, and he didn't treat my mom very well, and he didn't treat me very well. So what do you think about what well. she's saying? <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> And I feel horrible because it's very selfish of me, like you said. You know, you, I went into this just thinking about us, not the product of what's going to affect not only us, but our families. I know that my parents were the ones that had the affair, but I feel like every time someone looks at me, they know. 
they know that I'm a bad person and that if I wasn't here, that there would be so many people that would be happier because I ruined so much. Oh, and I just don't know how to get over that. <laughs> my entire life was a lie. 11 years of my life was an entire lie because my mother lied, my, my father lied, my daddy lied, his, my father's wife that lived up the road lied because all four of those people knew it. All four of them knew whose child I was and all four of them continued to lie to me. And then I grew up thinking I belonged to one family, I didn't belong to that family, I belonged to another family that wants absolutely nothing to do with me because of where I came from. And that's what I have to deal with. And so she's doing the same thing your mother did. Yes, my mother was in love. Well, we're gonna add something else to this conversation. When we come back, we're gonna meet Krista's husband uh, who moved out of their house a month ago. You're gonna find out why when we come back. Being that I came from an affair, my marriage has been affected. I felt like an outsider in my own marriage. Shutting him out was the easiest thing to do. Being that I came from an affair, my marriage has been affected. I don't want to let him get too close. Recently, we decided to separate. It wasn't until two years ago that I realized how much this affected her. I felt like an outsider in my own marriage. I can't make a commitment to us until I make a commitment to finding peace with myself. Shutting him out was the easiest thing to do. I have a really big fear of becoming my mom. I fear that I'm going to cheat on my husband. My biggest fear is losing my wife. I just wanted to have the happily ever after, and I don't think that's going to happen for me. You left a month ago. Yes. Tell me why. It was like she put up a shield. And I just couldn't, I couldn't deal with it anymore. You know, it was, it was over a course of two years, but it finally progressively got worse. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't get through the wall. You couldn't I, get through I the barrier. I couldn't get through the wall. Is that true? Yes. And you guys have been in a very unhealthy rhythm. Yes. Of From you're together, beginning. break up, together, break up. And it's almost always you that pulls out, right? 95% of the time, yes. Okay, and this has been going on for how many years? 15. 15 years? Yes, we've been married 11, uh, going on 11, mm -hmm. but it's been, our relationship's been for 15 years, yes. And when you would leave, what did you do? Go with other guys. You, you go back to the pattern you've had before? Yes. You're looking for somebody to love you? Yes. But what do you think about the fact that you've had a guy here for 15 years of your life, 11 married to you, that has hung in there when you have said day after day after day after day, love me, love me, love me, get back. Love me, love me, love me, get back. Exactly. Love me, love me, go, get back. Yes. Do you understand how crazy that makes him? I, I do. He loves me <clears throat> no matter what I have done. And I have done a lot. And I mean, I, we literally got married. I woke up the next morning, looked at him, and I said, we should have never gotten married. And I walked out the door, and I left. And I didn't come back for over a year. And yet, he took me back. Mm -hmm. I don't deserve him to love me and to continue to be there for me. But you don't deserve anything, no, right? I don't. Because you're a bastard child that ripped apart families and killed your father. I mean, that's the internal dialogue, right? I just, yeah, I just feel that I can't love because everyone I love gets hurt and dies, and I've hurt so many people. I don't want to hurt anymore, and it's just easier to have relationships where it's just about friends with benefits, and we move on, and I don't have to be committed, and I don't have to feel trapped in this relationship. Are you done with this, or are you willing to work on it? I'm willing to work on it. When you think about and talk about reality of suicide, there are a lot of things that contribute to somebody 
taking their own lives. They often start happening before the person that's headed that way even realizes it. But the number one thing they believe is that the world and everybody in it would be better off without them. That's exactly how I feel. She has said that today on this stage. She said, I, I'm just, everybody would be better off. I'm just a burden. I, I drag everybody down, everything down. So I'm telling you that you need to be sensitive to the fact that my perception is that she thinks there would just be a solution to all of this if she wasn't here. So that's a precaution that, that you need to be cognizant of. I'm sorry to burden you with that, but you need to be aware that I consider that to be on the radar. I don't want it to be by the end of the time that we leave here today, because I want to tell you something. We all have what I call an internal dialogue. Mm -hmm. It's a conversation that we have with ourselves right. about ourselves and about other people. See, we don't respond to what happens in life. We respond to what we say to ourselves about what happens in life. You're responding to what you're saying to yourself. You're saying, I wasn't wanted. I, I shouldn't be here. I'm an, I'm an illegitimate child. Correct. You're damaged goods, right? Uh, that's correct. I, I feel like every... And how I, can anybody know. love you, right? So if they start to, it feels really weird. My mother lied to me. My own mother lied to me. I can't trust anybody else because they're just going to lie to me and hurt me too. They, okay. are they you, all do that. Are, are you willing to do an experiment with me to get something out of you? Are you, Jermaine, willing to help her? Yes. <clears throat> We're going to do this when we come back. Just joining us, I'm here with two ladies, Krista and Jermaine. Now, Krista is here today because she learned at 11 years of age that she was the product of an affair. Now, Jermaine here is having an affair right now with a married man and is pregnant with his baby. Krista has said, wow, let me tell you what you're dialing this child in for when he gets here. You have a lot of resentment towards your mother for what she did and what she hid from you. I feel like I never had any answers. Okay. She can never give me an answer. I that. want that chair right here, please. And Chris, I'd like you to sit in it. Like that chair around here facing. And I would like you to sit in that chair. I want you to scoot up until your knees are touching the outside of her chair. Now, Krista, I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to leave them closed until I tell you. I want you to imagine that the woman in front of you, in fact, is your mother. I want you to see her in your mind's eye. And in just a moment, when I tell you to open your eyes, I want you to look your mother in her eyes, and I want you to tell her once and for all what she has done to you, what she has cheated you out of, what she has caused and created in your life. Open your eyes and say, Mother, you hurt me. Mother, you hurt me so bad. You made me feel like I don't deserve to be here. You made me feel like that I was a burden to our entire family. I just hate you so much sometimes. And only because you're my mother do I love you. But I don't like who you are at all. And I wish I could change who my mother is. <laughs> Tell her, I hate what you have done to me. Say it like you mean it. This is your time. I hate what you did to me. I hate that you were making me grow up feeling like I don't belong here. I want to feel like I matter in this life. And I want to love. I want to feel like I can be loved. Look at her. I can't. Say it. How could you do this to me? Say it. I can't. 
Say it. You can say it. Claim your right to say it now. How can you do this to me? How can you be so selfish to think that the only person that mattered was you and him? And when you made that decision to make my daddy my daddy, you should have just left it that way. You should have never told me the truth I didn't need to know. And I just wish you knew how to love me because you never did. You could never love me. You never loved me enough. And you would tell me you didn't know how to love me. And every time you looked at me, you knew what you had done. And I just reminded you on a daily basis. How much longer are you going to hurt? I don't know. How much longer are you going to sit around and feel like you're not good enough? I don't know. I just, I keep trying. I do so much to try to make myself feel like I'm an important person. Isn't there a point in time where you have a duty to say, I didn't have any choices then, but I have a choice now? I don't feel like I have choices. Stand up. Stand up. You can stay right there, Jermaine. All right, now stand up. I, I, I want you to look at all of these people out here. Mm -hmm. I want you to look at them. Do they look like they're judging you? No. Sometimes I just see disgust. If you're disgusted by who this person is, stand up now. You see anybody standing? No. Now let me ask you something, people. If you think this woman has hurt long enough, if you think she's carried the burden long enough, if you think it's time that she lets that 11-year-old little girl walk in the sunshine again, stand up for her right now. Look at these people. He stood up, too. He stood up, too. She stood up. Everybody stood up. There's a point at which this goes back to that 11-year-old little girl, and you are mistreating her. You didn't choose for them to have an affair. You didn't choose for them to hide this from you. You didn't choose for them to get divorces. You didn't choose for your father to get sick. You didn't choose for any of those things to happen. But you do have a choice now. You have a choice to use your life. And you're using it today. You've used it with her. Has she used her life for you today? And there are millions of people watching this right now. And you are making a difference. I just want to be that 11-year-old happy girl again. You have that choice. And it starts by giving yourself permission. The first step is you got to choose to forgive everybody in your life that has hurt you. I'm going to tell you, it doesn't mean when you forgive them, it doesn't mean that you say what you did was okay. It's not what that means. Right. What it means is I choose to not be in an emotional prison with you another minute of another hour of another day. But you got to make a choice. And it is a choice, by the way. You know, we think forgiveness is something that just hits us like a wave and we go, oh, wow, I've forgiven everybody. No. You make a conscious choice and you make it again every day. Because you don't need an excuse to sit on the sidelines. You need a purpose to get into this life. And today is the first step of that purpose. <clears throat> and look at these people. You got 250 people on your side. And I suspect several million more. you got to hold yourself to a higher standard, and I'm going to get you some ongoing professional help to do just that. This is a beginning, not an end. Okay? Mm -hmm. right, we got a place to start here. All right, my final words for Jermaine and Trevor when we come back. <laughs> While we're back, I have Jermaine and Trevor back up here. Um, 
they've been having an affair for a couple of years. There's a baby on the way, five months pregnant. What, what do you think about what's going on here today? I feel like I am worthless. I made terrible decisions that have hurt a lot of people, and I don't even know what to say. Well, you got a lot of cleaning up to do. You, you, you got, there, there are some, listen, when you bring a child into this world, that's a huge responsibility. It, it's a huge responsibility. And you need to prepare yourself to meet that responsibility. I think you're extremely immature. I think you have very little impulse control. And I think you need to work on those things and man up here and figure out what you need to do with your wife and your girlfriend and this baby coming on. I am more than willing to provide you with some professional help that will support you. Are you willing to put in the work to do that? Yeah. We, we will help you with this. Okay. Right. We will really help you. You've got some figuring out to do, right? Because one thing you know about Krista after listening to her, she doesn't seem to have much self-worth or self-esteem. And neither do you. Or you wouldn't be settling for what you're settling for. You have a priority here. Your undivided loyalty at this point needs to be to that child. If he fits into that picture, that's one thing. If he doesn't, that's another. But your undivided loyalty has to be to that child. And I'll provide you help with that as well. Okay? Okay. Right. I want to introduce somebody else here. Ellen was 31 years old when she learned the truth about who her real father was and that she too was the product of an affair. And she wanted to let Krista know that she is not alone. So Ellen, you've been watching all this with great interest, right? Yes. Tell it's me what you had to say. And I want to acknowledge you for the courage it took because I understand those feelings of being illegitimate. But like Dr. Phil said, you know, we didn't have a choice then. We do now. And when my mother looked me in the eye and said, please forgive me for my selfishness, you know, I, perception, my word is perception. And they had us. I mean, our parents had us. They had a choice in that. And so we were conceived in love. And it's what we do with it now. I know you're a mother. I don't want my daughter sitting in that chair saying the things to, to me that my mother heard and that you just said, your feelings. And I felt accountable to break that cycle. Well, I think it would be great if you two meet up backstage. And uh, Ellen, I just think it'd be great if you were just her new best friend and you guys talk about this. We'll be right back. talking about affairs and children of affairs and it is a perspective not many people think about when they jump into bed with somebody else's spouse but I think this has been an important discussion I certainly hope so uh, in fact we pose this question to our audience if you were conceived as a result of an affair would you want to know because you, like you said you were sitting there even told you if it was going to go this way the response was an overwhelming yes. 86% said yes, they would like to know. Um, I wonder if they would vote the same way after watching everything that we've talked about today. I'm not sure. Uh, I want to thank all of my guests today, and a special thanks to Ellen also, who has written a book called Ellen Who? A Story of a Secret Love Child, which is available now at Barnes & Noble. So I hope they pick that up and take a look at it. Uh, you can find me on DrPhil.com, Facebook, and Twitter. Thanks for being here. So long. <laughs>